Hello everyone, my name is Aaron Standard and today we're going to talk about integrating Akka.net and ASP.NET Core together. Uh, this is a bit of a remake, not too dissimilar from the remake that we made of our dependency injection video a week ago, which you can watch here. But this is kind of playing off that same theme, which is that we introduced a new technology called Akka Hosting, which allows Akka.NET to integrate directly into the entire Microsoft.Extensions ecosystem. So that includes, you know, config, logging, dependency injection, hosting, and even health checks. One of the things that also implies is that it's now much easier to integrate Akka.NET with ASP.NET Core, SignalR, gRPC, all the other web technologies you might want to use. So we're going to talk a little bit about that in this video. Now, first thing you might want to ask is, what are the use cases for working with Akka.NET and ASP.NET together in the same process? Well, one example might be putting a web API on top of your existing Akka.NET applications. Uh, this is a really common technique for trying to securely expose functionality to the public. That's something that ASP.NET does really well. It also makes it possible for non-Akadana applications to interact directly with like an Akadana cluster, for instance. So that's a really popular use case. But on top of that, if you're starting with just ASP.NET and you're interested in, let's say, running background jobs, or maybe you need some asynchronous dispatch for long running operations like bulk email notifications or ETL workloads, Akadana's really great at doing that and can tie directly into ASP.NET without needing you know, any additional infrastructure. The Akadana library by itself can do all of that. But if you actually want some more distributed functionality in your ASP.NET application, Akadana can also do things like help you build SignalR backplanes or do distributed caching. So we have a lot of customers in industries like software as a service. They use Akadana.net for doing both of those, for doing things like real-time collaboration between multiple users all editing the same document together, things like that. So these are some of the use cases for why you might want to consider it. After you've picked a use case and you know you need to use Akadana.net with ASP.NET, how would you go about doing that? Well, the first thing is we're going to need to install one of the Akadot hosting NuGet packages. And there's a bunch of different little flavors of them out there. Uh, the core package is just the straight up Akka hosting package there. If you know you're not going to need a distributed system or persistence for your actors or anything like that, you can just use that package. Uh, but if you're like me and you do a lot of work on highly available distributed systems, I always use the Akadot cluster hosting NuGet package. After you've installed this into your ASP.NET application, it's pretty easy to go ahead and register Akadot.NET and your actors inside your ASP.NET service collection, which is what we're doing here when we call the add Akka method. This is an extension method that's brought into the Akadot hosting namespace. And what this will do is it'll start an actor system, which is what we need in order to create and run actors behind the scenes. It'll start an actor system with the name SQL sharding in this case. And then down here, we have a little Akka configuration builder that allow us to specify some things about our actor system. So in this case, I'm turning on Akadot remote and Akadot cluster because this is part of a big distributed system. And then down here, I'm calling with shard region proxy and with actors. Uh, with shard region proxy is a method that's part of Akadot cluster sharding, which we just did a video on recently up here. That's allowing us to basically talk to a shard region that's running in a separate remote process uh, somewhere outside of our ASP.NET application. But then this with actors call right here, I'm actually starting a local actor, this fetch all products consumer, and I'm registering it into the actor registry using the actor's type as its key inside the registry here. The actor registry is something that's specific to Akka hosting. It allows us to inject specific actor instances into things like ASP.NET controllers or SignalR hubs. And you can see an example of that working here inside this web API controller. So this is just your you know, good old fashioned web API controller and ASP.NET Core. I'm passing in you know, an iLogger of type counter controller. Well, I'm also passing in an I have required actor of type counter actor. This is one of the constructs from Akka hosting. And what this will do is this will go ahead whenever we're instantiating one of these counter controllers, we're going to resolve this counter actor instance from the actor registry and then inject it here. So I can do things like ask this actor to process this fetch counter message and I'll get a counter response that I can serve back as JSON over the get endpoint of this particular controller. So that's a really simple example 
of Akka.net and ASP.NET integration right there, using the ask pattern to do request response with an actor to be able to serve those responses back up over your HTTP responses as well. So the next thing I wanted to do is actually give a little bit more of a full-fledged demo of Akka.net and ASP.NET integration. And we're actually gonna use the little Razor Pages sample that's built directly into the Akka.NET code samples repo here, which I've linked to in the description. If you scroll down, you'll see that we have three samples. We're gonna check out this first one, Akadot cluster sharding with SQL Server and Razor Pages. All right, now I've got two different processes here. I've got my SQL sharding host. This is basically our headless service that does all the real stateful computation with actors and everything. And then we have kind of a little thin Razor Pages app that's just kind of a UI on top of everything that this process is doing. So if we take a look at this app right now, you can see there's one available product in the system. It's a type of bourbon that I went ahead and recorded. And if I click on this, well, or 12, this will go ahead and pull up Rider and I'll F5 past that. But basically what you can see here is my little Razor Page model. Let me get rid of this. My Razor Page page model is taking an I required actor of type product marker. This points to actors that are running remotely in the other process. And every time we load the page, we're gonna go ahead and say, hey, get me your product data. We're gonna go ahead and fetch that. We're gonna incorporate that into our state. And that state's gonna be what renders all the different little components on screen here. Likewise, if I decided to go ahead and place an order for some of these products, that's gonna process a create order command and a product command response. And then we're gonna go ahead and reload the page again as part of our uh, redirect that we do down here when things complete successfully. And now you can go ahead and see that our supply log has changed. And on top of that, we have a recent order available showing that some revenue has been incremented. So this is just a really simple example of how we can work with Akka.net inside Razor Pages. Akka.net can also work in things like Blazor Server, SignalR, and gRPC as well. So the last thing I wanted to recap with is just use Akka.net hosting. It just works. It makes it really easy to take actors and inject them into other things such as controllers or Razor Pages in this case. And then on top of that, if you're interested in getting started, we also have this Akadot templates project inside the Akadot at GitHub organization. This makes it really easy to get started with Akadot hosting. And in fact, we have a web API template that's designed to work with Akadot cluster and also some of these service discovery things that are a little bit more sophisticated. You can check that out by calling .NET new install Akadot templates. This will install the most recent version and this will make these templates available on the .NET CLI, but also in Visual Studio, Writer, and VS Code. So thank you very much for your time today. Please don't forget to like and subscribe and we'll catch you next time.